we'll move on to the next presentation with the permission of the chair ladies and gentlemen i'd like to invite dr shilpa jay prakash she is a consultant cardiologist at savira medical center from anandpur andhra pradesh to speak for the next 12 minutes on a uh, 15 minutes i beg your pardon on angiotensin 2 receptor blocker in heart failure status 2016 dr shilpa jay prakash please good afternoon respected chairpersons uh, ladies and gentlemen at the outset i want to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present uh, for this august audience um, today my topic for presentation is arb in heart failure heart failure as you already know is a major cause of mortality and morbidity in our community and uh, with the advent of guideline directed medical management heart failure treatment has shown excellent results one of the pioneers in this guideline directed medical management is inhibition of the ras system and uh, we have multiple drugs for that uh, ac inhibitors being the foremost uh, drugs followed by angiotensin receptor blockers so angiotensin receptor blockers the first arb was introduced as late as 1995 which was losartan and presently there are around 10 more than 10 arbs available in the market so coming to the mechanism of action as we all know angiotensinogen gets converted into angiotensin 1 by renin and angiotensin 1 gets converted to angiotensin 2 by ace so ace inhibitors act at this step and prevent the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 however there are multiple other pathways through which angiotensin nogen and angiotensin 1 both get converted into angiotensin 2 these are the other enzymes like kinase catepsin and tpa so finally the angiotensin 2 acts on two receptors angiotensin 1 receptor which leads to vasoconstriction sympathetic activation cell growth sodium and fluid retention all of which we don't want and it 82 receptor has favorable effects like vasodilatation inhibition of cell growth and apoptosis so uh, another action of ac inhibitor is it prevents the degradation of bradykinin into its inactive peptides bradykinin has some favorable effect like uh, vasodilatation increases prostacyclin increases nitric oxide and uh, oxidative stress so this might be another mechanism of ac inhibitors which contributes to its uh, um, therapeutic effects in heart failure so Um, coming to tra- evidence of arbs in heart failure so these trials of arbs in heart failure are uh, little unique uh, because all these trials uh, previously used to um, um, examine only the mortality benefits however in these arb trials the major endpoint was actually recurrent ho- hospitalization due to heart failure this was examined as a major uh, primary outcome in these trials also another thing is already we have a gold standard for management of uh, heart failure in the form of ac inhibitors so we are comparing these arbs in regard to ac inhibitors and there was some sort of a ethical problem where you deny a patient of a gold standard treatment instead substitute it with a uh, treatment which there is no much evidence so coming to the trials uh, initially the first trial which studied was elite 2 where they compared losartan 50 mg daily uh, with captopril 50 mg 3 times a day so this trial was actually a non inferiority trial uh, where the, it showed that um, losartan was non in, not inferior to captopril Uh, there was no difference in the all cause mortality sudden death or resuscitated cardiac arrest however the losartan group had fewer adverse effects um, including cough cough due to ac inhibitor is a major uh, f- um, side effect in indian population and it has been quoted to be as i has 20% of the population so most of these patients tend to discontinue this treatment over a period of time due to intractable cough so when uh, they examined the effects of losartan in these patients they found out that the um, effect of like uh, adverse effect of cough was significantly less in losartan group compared to um, captopril group uh, 
So followed by, this was a comparison of ACE and ARB trial. Next came the Wahl-Heft trial, which was Walsartan in heart failure. Uh, this examined uh, patients with NYHA class 2 to class 4 symptoms, large number of patients who were randomized to receive either Walsartan 160 mg twice daily compared with a placebo. So this was a placebo randomized control trial and they found out, unfortunately they found out that there was absolutely no difference in mortality whether you gave an ARB or you did not. So uh, uh, instead what are all the good things that came out was Walsartan had significantly less number of hospitalization for heart failure. Even though there was no difference in mortality, these patients had fewer hospital admissions due to heart failure and there was a significant improvement in the NYHA class, ejection fraction signs and symptoms of heart failure as well as the quality of life. Then came the CHARM trial. CHARM was candesartan in heart failure to affect reduction in morbidity and mortality study. So this CHARM study had three arms. Uh, CHARM alternative where they substituted an AC inhibitor um, by a ARB in patients who were intolerant to AC inhibitors. It had another arm which was charm added where they added a ARB in a patient who was already taking a AC inhibitor to find out if the combined effect had any additional uh, uh, effect in these patients. Uh, another arm was the charm preserved arm where they studied patients who had ejection fraction more than 40 percent. So this was the uh, um, trial design. So the CHARM overall program uh, did not show any difference in mortality uh, between the candesartan or the placebo which was not statistically significant. However, when they considered uh, cardiovascular uh, other, uh, CV mortality along with heart failure hospitalization, you can see that there was a significant difference in the two arms, candesartan and placebo, which was also statistically significant. Uh, and similarly, in the, in the CHARM alternative trial where patients were intolerant to ACE and they used ARB instead, in such patients too, there was no difference when they compared only mortality, uh, which was 21% in candesartan and 24.8%, which was not satisfactorily uh, statistically significant. However, when they, when they considered heart failure hospitalization, uh, you could see that it was statistically significant. Candesartan group had a significantly less number of um, mortality and hospitalization of 33% when compared to placebo which was 40%. Then came the Valiant trial. Valiant was uh, done in post-MI patients, included a large number of patients, 14,000, with uh, LV systolic dysfunction, heart failure or both. Here they have randomized it into three groups, where in one group they gave only Valsartan, another group where they examined both Valsartan and uh, Captopril, and a third arm which had only Captopril. So this study, um, uh, was uh, followed, the endpoints were, uh, the, these patients were followed up for almost 24 months and the primary endpoints were death and secondary endpoints were death from cardiovascular causes, reinfarction and hospitalization. So when you see the mortality, all-cause mortality was not different in all the three arms, whether they used only Valsartan, Captopril or a combination of both, whereas when you see the um, uh, hospitalization for heart failure in the EMI and cardiovascular death. Again, this was also not statistically significant in the three arms. One important outcome of this trial was when they combined the combination of Valsartan and Captopril, you can see that the adverse effects went up quite high compared to just Valsartan or Captopril. So the combination adverse effects were like 34.8 percent. When you compared it with just Valsartan, it was 29 percent or just Captopril which was 28.4 percent. So the predominant adverse effects were in the Valsartan group, hypotension and renal dysfunction, whereas in the Captopril group, cough was a major adverse effect along with rash and taste disturbance. So this, uh, this was the final study, HEAL study, which, uh, which they examined heart failure endpoint evaluation for angiotensin II antagonist losartan. The hypothesis in this trial was um, by increasing the ARB dosage, uh, does it lead to any improved outcomes in heart failure they wanted to test. So here they have uh, taken 3,800 odd patients and randomized them into two groups. One group was re receiving the regular dosage of losartan, which was 50 mg once a day. And the second group received almost three times the uh, other group, that is 150 mg. 
and uh, these patients were studied for the primary endpoints. So here you can see death or hospitalization for heart failure when the dosage of uh, um, losartan was high in, in 150 mg, it was significantly less compared to 50 mg losartan per day. Also when th this is the uh, hazard ratio which shows death and uh, heart failure hospitalization was significantly in favor of high dose losartan when compared to 50 mg per day. So HEAL was the first study to investigate the dose response of ARB on clinical outcomes in patients with heart failure. So when you compare losartan 50 mg daily to 150 mg, there was a reduced rate of combined uh, all-cause mortality and heart failure hospitalization. However, the 150 mg dose was associated with higher rates of hypotension, hyperkalemia and renal improvement. So coming to what does the 2016 guidelines say, uh, according to ACCHA 2016 guidelines, um, it is a class 1A indication to use that is ARB's uh, usage of ARB to reduce morbidity and mortality is recommended in patients with prior or current symptoms of chronic heart failure only in those patients who are intolerant to AC inhibitors either due to cough or angioedema. ESC 2016 guidelines again uh, almost similar that is a class 1 indication to use a ARB is only in patients who are unable to tolerate AC inhibitors. The drugs which have been uh, studied in a, uh, heart failure, the ARBs which have been studied are only three of them have been studied, only candesartan, valsartan and losartan. So the starting doses are 4 to 8 mg OD candesartan and you titrate up to a 35 mg dose OD. Valsartan you start with 40 mg BD and increase up to 160 mg BD and losartan starting dosage of 50 mg OD and go up to 150 mg OD. So as an antihypertensive, if a patient is already taking an ARB as an antihypertensive and he develops a heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction, then you are supposed to continue the ARB as first choice, that is it is a class 1A indication. So the take home message is AC inhibitors are always the first choice drugs in patients with heart failure. Yeah, angiotensin receptor blockers are to be considered in patients who are intolerant to AC inhibitors or in patients who are hypertensive and are already taking ARB as an antihypertensive. Thank you. Thank you very much Dr. Shilpa. Please have your seat. We will have the discussion at the end of the next lecture coming up.